I'm going to be looking through at the new features within the RAD server to create auto-generated documentation for the APIs that you're sharing through your REST server. One of the key elements here is Swagger. Now Swagger, uh, or Swagger IO, um, if you want to go and visit the website there, uh, basically is a, a tool that you can use to read YAML. Uh, YAML is a, kind of a, a subset of JSON, it's kind of a, a description language that goes beyond kind of what JSON offers. It documents your API. And using YAML, you're able to import the YAML documentation, and it's quite human readable, into Swagger. And then using Swagger UI or the Swagger editor, uh, you can then see what the documentation looks like. That documentation can then be used through Swagger to generate SDKs for client libraries for a whole host of different programming languages. Uh, including JavaScript, and Scala, and PHP, uh, a whole host of different um, client-side uh, classes can be generated from that uh, YAML documentation through Swagger. So if you want to play around with Swagger, just go to swagger.io, uh, you'll find the links there, but the key place to get to is really GitHub, on the GitHub repository for swagger-api, uh, forward slash swagger hyphen UI and then uh, it took me a moment to work out where I needed to go really but the key thing is if you go to the the download zip and once you've downloaded that um, you don't need to do the building or anything else like that you can just use what's in the redist folder and the redistribution folder to be able to run a local copy of swagger UI and you need to run it locally on your machine so it's then within the domain to be able to connect to your rest server to then be able to get the full two-way interaction with it which we're going to have a look at so let's have a look at the existing EMS server structure so you have your EMS server and you then have an EMS client and that client calls through rest calls to the EMS server and you can have obviously multiple clients they're calling to EMS server now, one of those calls that can be made is obviously for the documentation now. And to do that, you call um, AP, forward slash API forward slash and then uh, either API doc dot JSON or API doc dot YAML. And let's go and have a look at that running. So under the sample projects, and they're here for both C++ and Object Pascal, under database, under EMS, you'll find API doc attributes sample and if we go ahead and open up the package here we can see this is just connecting to employee database table and uh, fetching some data back which it's then pushing out through a get call the implementation for that in here is now documented by a few additional attributes that have been added on so if we just scroll down here we can see all of them and uh, the first one is the endpoint request summary uh, saying this is uh, under category of sample tag and then with the title description etc being passed in. There's also the endpoint request parameter uh, this one here is called skip and that allows us to define a query here we can see it's a if it's a part of the path, if it's a query, if it's a header, a body or, um, or part of the form data so here this is forming part of the query uh, which becomes a kind of question mark on the on the URL uh, and then kind of the additional properties to define if it's a, a number, if it's a, an int32 for example. And there's also the response details. So here we're saying this is response 200 which is OK. And this is returning back an object and that object is defined as definitions employee table. If we go and have a look at the top here, rather than defining the employee table on every single one of the, the methods, we can go to the endpoint object YAML definitions and if we just control click the constant that's here. So here we can see the, the constant that's been defined to, to tell out the structure of what's being passed back. Now uh, quite honestly the quickest way to do this is just to, to run it once and then uh, execute it, see the data that comes back and then just take the, the values out of that. That's a, a quick way that I've done that in the past. Um, but you can then build up here uh, exactly what it is the different classes and, and how they're defined and what they reference. So here this table object actually references the item object. Uh, you can actually work with some of this um, straight out of the, def uh, the, uh, the example. So what that gives us as we go ahead and, and run this server, if we open the browser now uh, we can see the running version 2.1, let's just go forward slash API, we can see we have endpoints for api doc.yaml and if we just do api doc.yaml 
Here we can now see the YAML documentation, um, which is pretty readable, um, defining what's in there. Um, let's just copy that, and I'm going to go ahead and open up my Swagger UI that I've downloaded. And I'm just going to go, I, for some reason, just needs to disable it and enable it when I open up the page for the first time. Uh, I've got a cross origin resource sharing plugin for, uh, for Chrome here that allows me to then explore the documentation. So here's my EMS API documentation that's been imported from that YAML document. And here we can see the sample tag and the get. And here we can see an example which is defined from the, uh, the constant that we had a look at earlier. We can see the skip that's uh, defined. If we hit try it out, uh, we can see the response come back and, and the data. And if we put kind of skip five and hit try it out, we can see now that that's appended as a parameter on the end because it's a query parameter. So working really, really well. Um, and it's got the type defined here as well. So that's pretty cool. You know, the, the whole documentation is explorable here. We can go and explore the groups that are defined as part of um, you know, EMS server. And we see all the attributes and everything limited in there as well. So really, really, really careful. Um, also easy to use documentation um, through Swagger.